hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we will continue our discussion with uh, the subject of electrical machines so in the previous videos we discussed about uh, the basic introductory concepts related to transformer so in this video we are going to uh, extend that discussion and we'll discuss about uh, the concept of ideal transformer so before that we'll just have a quick uh, refresh so basically a transformer is uh, we can say a sort of energy conversion device which is used for increasing or decreasing the voltage of the input ac supply which is given to it to the primary winding with a corresponding increase or decrease in the current primary and the secondary current so it is a static equ equipment it has no moving parts, the simple construction and very high efficiency. The construction of a transformer consists of three main parts, the laminated magnetic core, the primary winding and the secondary winding. Okay, the laminated core, primary winding, secondary winding. And the number of turns across the primary and secondary winding, they play a very huge role in deciding whether the output voltage will be more or less as compared to the input supply voltage okay so we have discussed uh, uh, some uh, basic principle related to how the emfs are induced as per faraday's law and uh, how mutual flux plays a role in uh, the induction of the EMFs, primary and secondary EMFs, E1 and E2 respectively. So the concept of ideal transformer is actually, we do not have anything called as an ideal transformer, okay. A practical transformer is very, very, very different from an ideal transformer, but it is used to, you know, we study it to, you know, to have a reference model, okay. You know, something uh, we can compare the performance of a actual transformer, a model, a reference model for comparison. So that's why we study ideal transformer. So the ideal transformer is one in which there is no winding resistance. Winding resistance means, you know, these primary and secondary windings, they are not, you know, purely inductive in nature okay it has some amount of resistance in addition to the inductance see it looks something like this r and l the primary and secondary windings when it is purely inductive it can be represented by only this simple inductor but it's not that it has some amount of resistance and inductance the primary and secondary windings so this is what a practical transformer looks like some amount of resistance some amount of inductance at the primary and same in the secondary resistance and inductance whereas ideal transformer is purely inductive only inductance no resistance so an ideal transformer first characteristic no winding resistance next is no leakage flux so please uh, i want you to uh, check the videos related to coupled circuits and phasor diagram of AC circuits before watching this video. I have posted the two videos. Please check out those videos related to coupled circuits and phasor diagram that I have explained what is uh, you know uh, mutual flux, what is leakage flux, how two coils you know inductive coils they link with each other emf induction generation all of that i've discussed also i've discussed about the drawing the phasor diagrams for ac circuits rl rc simply you know, purely resistive purely inductive purely capacitive all of that so leakage flux is that flux you know when current flows through the windings a flux is generated in each of the windings some amount of flux that is generated in a particular winding it links with the other winding and some links with the winding itself okay S suppose a current flows through the primary winding a flux will be generated in the 
primary winding let's say primary flux some amount of that primary flux links with the secondary winding that is mutual flux the amount of flux that does not link with the secondary winding and only links with the primary winding that is leakage flux similarly when current flows through the secondary winding secondary flux will be produced the amount of that secondary flux that links with the opposite winding that is the primary winding that is mutual flux common flux flux that links with both the primary and secondary winding is mutual flux and the flux that links with the winding itself only with itself that is leakage flux that leakage flux has no role in transformer only mutual flux is the contributing factor so an ideal transformer has no leakage flux only mutual flux so it is impossible because there will be leakage flux and no iron losses so there are two types of losses in transformer we, we discussed copper losses because of the, the winding resistance and iron losses due to hysteresis eddy current all of that so no iron losses in the core that does not happen there are losses iron losses happening so ideal transformer has these three characteristics so it is impossible to design an ideal transformer but as i said we study the characteristics of an ideal transformer to have a reference okay for comparison comparison of the performance of a practical transformer an actual transformer so an ideal transformer as i said it has no winding resistance it has no iron losses it has no leakage flux only mutual flux whereas a practical transformer it has winding resistance it has iron loss it has leakage flux so first let us discuss about ideal transformer then we'll go to practical transformer in a separate video so ideal transformer on no load means no load is connected across the secondary winding and the transformer is ideal so the secondary is open circuited no load is connected as you can see here the primary and secondary coils are pure inductive coils no winding resistance means pure inductive coils only l no r the ac supply voltage v1 is connected across the primary winding okay because of this uh, ac voltage a primary current a primary magnetizing current i subscript m flows through the primary coil the purely inductive primary coil it flows through the primary winding produces a flux phi the mutual flux which links with both the primary and the secondary winding the common flux no leakage flux remember this is ideal transformer that induces a emf e1 as per faraday's law of electromagnetic induction then the same flux that links with the secondary winding it generates emf e2 same as per faraday's law of electromagnetic induction minus n1 d5 by dt this is minus n2 d5 by dt minus sign because of lenz law okay then the primary emf e1 the induced emf across primary winding is opposite in opposition 180 degree out of phase with v1 as per lenz law okay so v1 and e1 are you know opposite 180 degree out of phase same magnitude but 180 degree out of phase now this is the sequence of events that happens in ideal transformer with no load now to draw the phasor diagram phasor diagram is very important so i would like you to please watch the video related to the phasor diagrams of purely resistive inductive capacitive rl and rc circuits before watching this so that you understand this so the magnetizing current which flows through this purely inductive primary coil pure inductance like this the bottom one l so when a current flows through a purely inductive coil the current it lags behind the applied voltage by 90 degree that is the property of inductive circuits so here the magnetizing current im will lag behind the applied ac voltage v1 by 90 degree see we have drawn the phasor diagram here let us take it one by one first we have this 
flux phi this axis which is the reference magnetizing current im will be in the same phase as the mutual flux the common flux phi so this magnetizing current im flows through the primary purely inductive coil when current flows through a purely inductive coil it will lag behind the applied voltage by 90 degree here the applied voltage is v1 so im will lag behind v1 by 90 degree so here v1 im im is lagging behind v1 by 90 degree here we studied that e1 and v1 are 180 degree out of phase but equal in magnitude this is V1, the AC supply voltage. This is E1, the primary induced EMF. They are 180 degree out of phase, opposite in direction, equal magnitude. Now, the number of turns of the primary and secondary winding are different. So, as per the number of turns of primary and secondary winding, E1 and E2 will be different from each other. It can be more, it can be less. So here I have taken that E2 is more than E1, you no know, magnitude wise and it is equal to V2 because there is no load, there is no load connected. So E2 and V2 will be the same because there is no winding, secondary winding resistance. It is an ideal transformer, no secondary winding resistance. If load would have been connected also for an ideal transformer there would have been no voltage drop so e2 and v2 will be equal so in this case there is no load there is no winding resistance so e2 is same as v2 that is the same here e2 is equal to v2 the secondary induced emf is the same as the output voltage so this is the phasor diagram so you check it one by one first the primary magnetizing current in phase with the flux mutual flux for an inductive circuit the current lags behind the supply voltage by 90 degree so im and v1 are separated by 90 degree v1 and e1 the supply voltage and the primary induced emf are 180 degree out of phase but equal in magnitude so here they are 180 degree out of phase equal in magnitude and the E2 and E1, they can be more or less as per the number of turns. So here I have taken that E2 is more than E1. It can also be less depending on whether it is a step up or step down transformer. But E2 will be equal to V2. That is secondary induced EMF will be the same as the output because there is no winding resistance here, no load here. Okay, so this is the whole process of the working principle of an ideal transformer or no load and this is the phasor diagram okay so this is the whole concept so next we'll discuss ideal transformer with load connected then practical transformer on load and no load and then we'll conclude the whole discussion so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much